A uh, very warm welcome to EPG Pathshala and I am Dr. Swati Banerjee from the School of Social Work uh, at Tata Institute of Social Sciences and I am Associate Professor here. Uh, today I will be talking to you on the module on Patriarchy which is part of the paper on Gender and Social Work. Uh, essentially uh, this module on Patriarchy uh, you know kind of tries to delineate the complexities of the term and we'll today be discussing some of the key concepts and meanings uh, of the term. Simultaneously, we'll also be looking at how does this concept uh, manifest in everyday life uh, and, and how, how, do, how do we explain uh, and theorize it within the feminist understanding. Uh, we'll also attempt to look at some of the key patriarchal uh, control points and how, how has it shifted over a period of time uh, from private patriarchy to public patriarchy. We also look at some of the uh, larger dynamics in terms of caste identity and patriarchy and how do women negotiate this patriarchy in their everyday life in terms of resisting it on a day-to-day -day basis and some of their lived experiences. Uh, so now we, uh, you know, we'll attempt to look at the concept. Uh, before uh, I go into uh, delineating the concept, we start with an example. I'll bring uh, one of my experiences of talking to a woman in a slum community in Mumbai. And uh, I asked her, um, uh, in a community meeting, uh, what time do you get up? Uh, she says that I get up at uh, 7 o'clock. Then I ask her, what do you do? Uh, she says that I go and fetch water. So after that, do you, what do you do? Yes, after that, uh, I have to cook for the family and my children and I have to, uh, you know, see, get, re get my children ready for the school. Do you take, I ask her, do you take rest after that? Um, no, I have to uh, cook after that. When does your husband get up? My husband gets up at 7.30. What does he do then? Does he help you? The woman is very startled when I ask her this question and uh, she replies, how can he do that? He's a man. Uh, now this brings us to the question, what makes a woman to accept her condition? And how do we understand the system of disparity amongst men and women and the domination that happens? Basically, patriarchy is a concept that helps us to unravel this. Sylvia Valby, one of the feminist theorists, uh, while theorizing patriarchy, she calls it a system of social structures and practices in which men dominate, oppress and exploit women. And there is a particular socio-cultural meaning uh, in everyday society and how, how does patriarchy operates in our day-to-day -day lives. It operates uh, around different axes. For example, uh, men and women get unequal pay and unequal wages in a lot of work. For example, in farm labor, even today, the kind of work that men and women would do might involve similar kind of drudgery of work, but the pay is uh, quite different. There is abuse, there are differential gender roles, there is objectification of women. Uh, now, there are a lot of these advertisements that we see uh, daily, um, you know, in the TV, in other places. Uh, uh, and most of the times we see these beautiful women uh, in different, in a variety of dresses. And sometimes you don't understand whether it's an advertisement of a computer or it's an advertisement of biscuit. What we usually see is this beautiful women there. So how, how do we understand this objectification that happens? The unreality standards of beauty. A lot of these young girls grow up with this notion of Barbie doll beauty and we know how it impacts their psyche and overall growth. A culture of rape and we uh, do understand uh, that a lot of this gets visibilized but a lot of this violence especially with marginalized women doesn't even come to the mainstream media. We also have uh, male-dominated workspaces and stereotypes around that. 
uh, very recently, uh, I think we read it in the news where there was a, a woman pilot and a passenger said that he would not travel because the plane is being run by a woman pilot. So these are the gender stereotypes which discriminate, which shame women and they live with this day-to-day -day domination in their lives. Therefore, patriarchy is both an ideology and a social structure that considers men superior to women it oppresses women by exerting various controls in their lives and the manifestations of patriarchy uh, is there in our everyday life and what it determines, what it means for a woman to leave this day-to-day -day patriarchy. For example, here we see this picture uh, where uh, you know, a father is carrying uh, the child and the child is telling his father, uh, you know, let's go from the side, let's go from the bush because if people see that you're doing mama's work, they will laugh at you. Uh, this also tells us what is expected of us, what is expected of both men and women. Simultaneously, let's see this picture and see what is allowed and valued in us. For example, this woman is talking, is telling her husband and uh, other men whom he's uh, sitting with, she's saying, I have plans and I have to go for a very important meeting. And he says, is it a full stay? Basically, he feels that she is not capable of doing something very important. Um, Therefore, this gives us uh, certain disadvantages. For example, we see this picture. Uh, there is an important meeting. A woman is talking in that meeting. And, uh, you know, somebody from the audience is disrespectfully saying, can you be a little louder? Um, women also live with this different standards of what is good for a woman and what is bad for a woman. For example, uh, you know, as she grows up, she's taught uh, that a good woman behaves in a particular manner, sits in a particular manner, talks in a particular manner. At the same time, when she goes into a public space, those qualities are not accepted. So there is this dichotomy which she faces in her day-to-day -day life. Now we see this picture and this is about the nature and extent of disparity and discrimination and an extreme example of how it impacts a woman's life. And this is about violence where this little child is telling, uh, you know, please don't beat my mother. She is not a child and the father is about to abuse her. So this is an extreme form of violence which patriarchy often takes up. Uh, patriarchy has been theorized over a period of time in the feminist discourse and now we'll look at some of this key and dominant ideas within this discourses. Um, feminists have been trying to unravel patriarchy to understand the key aspects of women's domination. Uh, for example, radical feminists uh, like Kate Millett um, has focused on the system of male domination and women's subordination. And radical feminists have largely, um, you know, tried to understand women's domination uh, by trying to understand control over women's body and sexuality. Simultaneously, Marxist feminists have established the link between women's subordination and the organization of the modes of production. Feminists of color and intersectionality theorists have acknowledged the differences between women. They also say that uh, women uh, across all spaces are not a homogeneous category and we need to understand the differences that exist in women and therefore how patriarchy functions differently in different women's lives. It is the relationship between these interrelated factors as mutual systems of domination and subordination that is essential in the understanding of oppression of women across different categories include caste, including caste, class, race, etc. Therefore, what emerges from this different understanding of feminist theorizing is the key aspects of patriarchal control over a woman's life and some of the key aspects of control that has been identified is 
uh, women's productive labor what women do outside the house and what fetches her money uh, women do a lot of work both within the house and outside the house but women's work within the house and outside is often negated neglected and invisibilized uh, I think you all must be aware about this fact that a lot of times when you ask a man that what does his wife do, he would simply say that my wife doesn't work. Meri bivi kaam nahi karti. It kind of captures the way men would look at or give value to women's productive labor in various spaces. The second aspect of control would be women's reproductive ability. Uh, and how that is controlled. For example, a lot of times women are seen as somebody who is a child bearer and she's given respect if she does that and especially if she gives birth to a male child. Also, uh, when women is not able to give birth, she is looked down upon and ostracized in many, many instances. The other aspect of control is women's sexuality and a lot of times we say that it's not the actual rape which curbs women's mobility that's the other axis of control but it's the fear of rape that actually curbs women's mobility so these are some of the key aspects of control patriarchal control now let's move uh, to the shifts in understanding of patriarchy. The initial understanding of patriarchy has been limited within the private sphere of the household and trying to look at household as a chief site of women's oppression and simultaneously trying to look at how the different factors like caste, class, religion determine uh, aspects of patriarchal control within the private sphere. So we have understanding of private patriarchy. But slowly we understand that uh, patriarchal control is not only limited to, to the private space of the household, but it uh, women are also oppressed in public sites such as employment uh, and also by the state. Women's role as mothers and wives structure their lives to such an extent that their marginalization and exclusion from the public sphere continues unabated. Gender stereotyping of particular tasks in professional bodies and, their, and often their association with masculine values perpetuates patriarchy to a great extent. Um, the existence of patriarchy is a reality in India. And we know that the different identities and structural inequities of caste, tribe, etc., how that interweaves into this understanding. For example, the understanding of endogamy and purity is an inherent part of the caste structure in India, which makes women to bear the brunt of maintaining it, leading to control over their body, over their mobility, leading to violence, discrimination, etc control over their bodies and sexual violence is therefore a common occurrence on Dalit and tribal women in India, which often goes invisibilized. Uh, let's uh, look at this example. It's about the daily struggle and discrimination faced by Katkari tribal women. Uh, the Katkaris are considered to be a particularly vulnerable tribal group and they migrate usually for more than six months to earn their livelihood. Within this context of shifting and transformation in livelihoods, uh, there is an overall mar marginalization of the community, but within that there is layered marginalization and women face day-to-day -day violence. I'll just talk to you about the experience of one of the women in the brick kiln where they go during migration. This woman says, I still shudder to think of that night when I first saw something like that happen. In my neighboring hut stayed Jija and her husband and children. Someone came and said that the contractors wanted to see her. The next thing which we heard was loud shrieks and crying, breaking the stillness of the night. None of us could do anything. 
Now we all know that the contractors or the sawkas not only buy our productive labor, but they also buy our isat. This is from one of my researchers in the field. This is not a single experience, but this is a pattern in the lives of many of these marginalized women. I'll take you through another example. Uh, we often say that patriarchy exists in so-called developing countries, but it's also a reality of often the so-called developed countries, what we call the interior south of the north. And this example is about the First Nations or the tribal communities in Canada uh, and how, how the women are treated there. Uh, I'll read out this women's voice and it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, Helen Betty Osborne, she is an indigenous woman. She says uh, she went out with a number of friends to dance. At around 2 a.m., she was walking back to house where she was accosted by non-indigenous men. According to the testimony of one of the men, the four had decided to pick up this indigenous women and have sex. And when Osborne refused, she was bitten and stabbed to death. Now, this thing of a missing indigenous women hardly is even reported in a country like Canada. And there are these examples of missing justice essentially because it's not only a woman, but it's an indigenous woman. Resisting patriarchy. Patriarchy, as I have tried to argue, is part of our daily lives uh, across the lives of different women. And simultaneously, because there is certain kind of expectations that society ascribes to men and women, patriarchy also influences men. Within this context of discrimination, many women try to resist it in their own way. Uh, so the term called patriarchal bargain has been used to argue how in a given society, women strategize within a set of concrete constraints depending upon the various factors like caste, class, ethnicity, etc. Uh, however, patriarchal bargain is an individual strategy designed to manipulate the system. It doesn't change the system. It is essentially women try to manipulate to put it to their advantage but the system still remains intact. There are various forms of resistance and some of the examples would be, uh, let's say, supporting gay marriage, uh, marrying a man but keeping one's own name. Uh, you know, a personal example would be many, many years back, uh, you know, when I decided to keep my name even after marriage, I would often face a lot of uh, struggles, especially at the passport office and many other places. Uh, but today it's changing a little bit and uh, there has been a shift. However, it's still, it's still a struggle for many, many women. Challenging the institution of marriage and monogamy, choosing not to have children, choosing alternate sexual or orientation, having children outside the wedlock are different ways in which resistance to patriarchal cultural values are meted out by women in their everyday life. Resistance is not easy. It's a process, it's a struggle, and a lot of times, uh, even though we are supposedly aware, we don't understand the implications of subtle patriarchy and how it impacts women. Again, I'll give you a personal example here. And a few years back, when the census enumeration was happening, uh, the census persons who was doing the enumeration, they came to my house. I opened the door for them and they asked, is there nobody in the house? I was startled, I'm there, I opened the house, I opened the door, I was in front of them. They still kept on asking, is there nobody in the house? I realized they were looking for a man because they have to interview the head of the household and they can't, they thought the head of the household can't be a woman. And that's the inherent patriarchy, which is there within the context of our state policies, our programs, our day-to-day -day norms and values, our research that we do. 
And finally, I had to negotiate and I had to say that uh, if you have to take the information, if you, ha you have to take it from me. But these experiences are not easy and sometimes there's a lot of struggle around that. Therefore, the idea is to constantly seek, question and challenge the institutions of male dominance and privilege that exist in our society. Finally, to conclude, uh, what I have tried and attempted to do is to share with all of you uh, the term patriarchy, which is nowadays used quite a lot, but I've tried to delineate the, some of the complexities and some of the key insights that has been derived uh, through this discussion has been existence of patriarchy as a common occurrence and experiences of women and men in diverse context. Uh, so a contextual understanding of patriarchy is very important and especially how do we understand the experiences of marginalized women. Theorization and feminist understanding of patriarchy, we have also tried to say that patriarchy is not only private but it is also a public occurrence and the process of resisting patriarchy is a complicated one and women are constantly trying to bargain and negotiate with patriarchal structures within the constraints of a given society. So we have uh, tried to understand uh, you know, how patriarchy operates in different spheres, uh, the private sphere and the public sphere and how it impacts our daily lives. Uh, so we have tried to understand what is this term called patriarchy. So we realize it's not just private patriarchy, but it's a larger social structure which impacts both men and women, but the impact on men within the context as present is perhaps more severe. Uh, we have also tried to understand uh, how do we look at the understanding of patriarchy in terms of uh, the feminist discourses and how does the different feminist theories tries to understand the term patriarchy as a key analytical category to explain the dominance that exists in our society. We've also tried to see the shifts that happens uh, in terms of the understanding of patriarchy and the occurrence of patriarchy from the private to the public and how it impacts the daily lives of women. We have looked at a few examples. For example, we have looked at the example of the Katkari tribal woman and her daily struggle at the brick kiln. We have also tried to look at indigenous women in Canada in a very different context, but how it influences their lives. We have also looked at the various uh, aspects of control of patriarchy and some of the key aspects of patriarchal control as we have discussed earlier is uh, women's productive ability, women's reproductive ability, sexuality and mobility. Some of this uh, works together to kind of create the system of domination and oppression. And finally, we have tried to look at the process of resisting patriarchy. Patriarchy, as we have said, is an everyday occurrence. It's a complicated reality or a complex reality. And often women try to negotiate patriarchy within small little uh, ways in their own context. Uh, sometimes even uh, the fe feminization, uh, the way or com a commodification of women's body which patriarchy uses, women try to use the same thing and try to negotiate and get something out of this unequal structure. However, it still remains an individual effort and the larger power structures doesn't shake. And there are many, many other forms of resistance which women use in their everyday life for example, maybe having a child out of a wedlock or keeping her name even after marriage, etc. But this process is a difficult process and it's a journey. And I'm sure you will uh, try to understand and reflect not only through readings, but also through your own lives and see how it operates in your own lives 
and in the lives of women around you and especially with respect to the different marginalized women and how it operates in their lives. And you can take it forward through a few more readings which will give you a little more enhanced understanding about the term and about the complexities that exist within the term. Um, here are a few uh, references uh, for you. Uh, some of the important references would be, for example, Connell on gender and power. Uh, here she is trying to explain uh, the power relations in terms of, uh, you know, a complete power over and how that impacts women and the sexual politics around it. Uh, an interesting reading would be by Uma Chakravarti where she talks about the conceptualization of Brahminical patriarchy. Uh, there are also other readings, for example, a reading by Rosemary Tong. Uh, it's about uh, a comprehensive introduction on feminist thought. This gives an overview of different feminist thought and it will give you an initial and a broad understanding of patriarchy. Even if you are not able to go through the entire chapter, the introductory chapter would, be, would give you a good pick into the different feminist thoughts. Uh, the other interesting reading would be by Sylvia Valby, where she talks about theorizing patriarchy and some of it which we discussed uh, in our discussion just now. Uh, so I will end this discussion today with all of you uh, with this quote from Connell. Uh, and uh, she suggests that this gender relations and patriarchal constructions though are reproduced continuously in our society, but it is also subject to transformation. And each one of us need to look at it not only as an academic discipline, but see how it impacts us and people around us and how we need to overthrow and smash patriarchy. Thank you so much.